We have another asteroid alert. Scientists shocked after an amateur sky watcher, not even an astronomer, makes an important scientific discovery. Sean Martin of Express UK reports this. We know that the space agencies were left stunned when uh, they discovered an asteroid streaking across the sky through the Hubble Space Telescope images, attempted to take images of one of the most beautiful nebulas in the universe, Crab Nebula. An asteroid crept into the picture that uh, Hubble took of the Crab Nebula. It's green and yellow patterns. And you take the image of the area of the size of a nebula, Hubble has to use the long exposure technique to see other astronomical objects moving through the image as well. And Hubble focused on the Crab Nebula, which is 6,500 light years from Earth, and it saw an asteroid streaking across the sky. Crab Nebula being 10 light years across, the asteroid could be seen traveling, staggering 49.6 billion trillion kilometers. Now the asteroid was first spotted by an amateur astronomer, Melina Theveno from Germany. She was a volunteer for the European Space Agency's Hubble Asteroid Hunter Project. Earlier this year, ESA opened up thousands, ESA opened up thousands of images to the public. Not only ESA, but also NASA. Remember we made a video on this. They had so many images that they had to scour they had to examine because the artificial intelligence can't make heads or tails of what it's looking at. And the only people that, the only beings, of course, that can make heads or tails of movement or differences in these sky images are human beings, human eyes. And uh, even NASA had asked uh, for volunteers who get paid absolutely zero <laughs> to help them, you know, to be given as many images as they want and to uh, examine these images with their beautiful little eyes and um, in their volunteer, in their, on their own time. And uh, volunteers, of course, they get uh, paid absolutely nothing. But when they find something, they become heroes and they're in the astronomy legends forever. So just like this girl, Melina. Now, uh, uh, these space agencies are allowing people to search the galleries for hidden space rocks that are missed by, in this case, European Space Agency and also NASA is doing the same thing. Now this project is already paying dividends because Melina Theveno spotted an asteroid leaving stunning streaks of light through the Crab Nebula with the original image taken way back in 2005. The ESA said Hubble Asteroid Hunter Melina was a citizen science project to identify serendipitous observations. Serendipitous observations. How happy she must be, we're all happy that she found it, of asteroids in Hubble Space Telescope HST images. The HST data archive hides unexpected treasures, such as traces of asteroids. Now, needless to say, ESA and of course NASA is wishing that its uh, volunteers will do the same thing, have a success like this. So uh, they were very happy that this thing was discovered. This is why they asked for volunteers, because these things have to be discovered. There are so many asteroids and celestial bodies traveling through our solar system, even coming towards Earth, that's what they want to find, that they have to have volunteers doing. This is a very important volunteer job, very important. Uh, so. These uh, HST data archives hide unexpected bodies, these treasures, traces of asteroids, and discovering highly valuable uh, information for scientists studying these minor solar system bodies. Now, for example, we know, we know that recently another amateur astronomer found an interstellar comet coming at us, Borisov, Yanadi Borisov from uh, Crimea. He's an amateur astronomer as well, but the thing is, though, he was uh, he's pretty knowledgeable because he built his own telescope. He built it himself, and that's how he found the interstellar comet Borisov in the beginning of August. Now, we had the Oumuamua interstellar comet coming at us 2017, and we have this other one just seen by Bor. Who, who knows how many others have gone by that have not been noticed? But Borisov, the amateur astronomer, noticed it. 
it was he was looking at the sun and I would venture to say he was looking at the sun because a lot of people have images of weird things weird planetary systems around the sun and that's what he was looking at and he found the interstellar comet and then the astronomers came and explained to us that yes we're going to be having a lot more interstellar comets coming at us because there's this planetary whatever it is system body I don't know what we don't know what it is there's something at the edge of our solar system spewing out these interstellar comets so that's interesting new information uh, it coincided with the uh, new interstellar comet the Borisov comet found this uh, beginning of this August so um, these amateur astronomers good for them they're finding things and uh, if you have a lot of time and you don't know what to do with yourself get in touch with ESA get in touch with NASA and volunteer to look at their images they'll send you the images on your emails and you'll, you can start and examine them all you want have you know huge uh, tons of coffee near you and uh, popcorn and uh, go to it listen to some wonderful music heavy metal or classical or whatever and uh, you know two steps from hell I like that music and look at them that's fantastic I'm sure you'll find something uh, there seems to be a lot of activity up there anyway uh, the Crab Nebula, they say, is a remnant of a supernova which was first observed 1054 AD when Chinese astronomers noticed a new dot in the sky. NASA said uh, concerning the Crab Nebula, which is known in the scientific community as Messier 1, quote, a rapidly spinning neutron star, the ultra-dense core of the exploded star, is embedded in the center of Crab Nebula electrons whirling at nearly the speed of light around the star's magnetic field lines produce an eerie blue light in the interior of the nebula the neutron star like a lighthouse ejects twin beams of radiation that make it appear to pulse 30 times per second as it rotates the unfortunate thing is that Hubble telescope is said to be retired in 2021 21, after which the more powerful James Webb telescope will take over thank goodness so we'll have a continuation with a better telescope. The infrared machine, the John Webb, uh, the Webb telescope, is so powerful it'll reach back to the furthest realms and the earliest moments of the universe. You can imagine. The JWST has the capability of scanning thousands of planets for alien life as well, even though those planets are thousands of light years away. And one of the differences between Hubble and JWST will be how far back in time it will be able to see. Hubble can see far into space and is essentially looking back in time as light travels to the craft. Through Hubble, experts have been able to view the information of the first galaxies about one billion years after the Big Bang, but the Webb telescope is much more powerful and be able to see just 0.3 billion years after the Big Bang to when visible light itself was beginning to form. Let's also remember that the astronomers have told us that most times the celestial bodies come in in groups, or binaries at least, not, not singularly. Anyway, asteroid facts. NASA estimates a football field size asteroid collides with our planet once every 2,000 years or so. A car sized asteroid hits the Earth on average at least once a year. Some of the bigger space rocks in the asteroid belt can be as large as 583 miles across, that's like a small planet, as icy comets fly around the solar system, their outer layers sublimate in the sun's heat and leave behind a glowing trail. So this is what uh, was viewed in the images by ESA that were given to uh, Melina uh, from Germany, the amateur astronomer, and wonderful images that uh, she found. This is an infrared view of Jupiter being hit by Schumacher-Levy comet. This is NASA images. Look at that. And we know that Jupiter is like, what, 50 times the mass of Earth? I'm not an astronomer, but it's huge. And so you can imagine the impact. Look at that. Look at that. Um, okay, so we, have, we know that a lot of planets in our solar system have impact craters, scars from uh, celestial body impacts on them 
the moon, Mars, and uh, obviously here, we don't know, it's a gas giant Jupiter. Uh, you know, if you could see under all that gas atmosphere into what is the uh, area of land core, whatever. Um, look at that. Okay, and even Earth. Earth has uh, over 120 confirmed impact sites, and they're finding more all the time. For example, from Google Earth, in 2004, they found the southwest corner of Egypt, bordering with Ethiopia, impact, uh, asteroid impact craters, and they found that those impact craters caused volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, and that was around 5,000 years ago, 3,000 BC. And uh, that was found from Google Earth. They went and examined the area, and that's what they confirmed. And then another guy, 2014, did the same thing and found another impact asteroid impact site in uh, Iraq, on the other side of the uh, uh, Sinai Peninsula, and another asteroid impact there. And of course, that side, that area is full of volcanic uh, fields. And we don't know too much about that because we're always concentrating on other areas, but uh, like Europe or the United States or Canada. And we recently found that Hudson Bay, that huge circle above the Great Lakes in North America, was formed by a comet impact. Comet impact about, well, they first said, thought that it was only Northern Hemisphere, first U.S. and then Northern Hemisphere, and then they saw that it was a global event, and it looked like about 13,000 years ago what caused the Ice Age of the Andreas extinction they had an inbound comet that broke into pieces, at least seven, and impound, um, impla uh, um, impacted the Earth. And one of those big pieces formed the um, Hudson Bay area. And I was always, you know, I was always wondering how that, what that thing was, that huge round body there. And that was confirmed to be comet impact. Comets. We know we're getting, another thing we found out a couple of days ago was astonishing. I just can't believe it. So I have to tell you again now. Uh, this was a comet, Shoemaker-Levi comet, okay? That we are being bombarded by at least 25,000 icy bodied comets every single day. And they weigh anywhere between 20 to 40 tons each of pure H2O. And this was found out accidentally by astronomers who wanted to film the aurora borealis, the northern lights, from on top of the North Pole. And uh, they did that with the satellite. And they also found these black blotches, and they didn't know what those black blotches were. And they sent up a satellite 14, 15 years later to examine more of what was coming in, and they found that these were icy bodies of comets and they were not impacting us in our atmosphere. They were impacting us at the edge of our magnetosphere. And they were bringing in 25,000 comets a day, 20 to 40 tons of water, of clean water. And you can imagine, but that's besides the asteroids coming in, turning into dust. All these fireballs turning into dust. Tons, I think 40 tons a day. 40 tons a day, if I'm not mistaken, it could be, I don't know, I can't remember, 40-something, 40 40,000. I know 40 tons a day is also CO2 coming from Yellowstone alone. But uh, we're getting dust, a tremendous amount every single day that we can't see, but it's coming in as dust particles from uh, our solar system and beyond. And we're also getting these uh, solar system comets or interstellar comets, I don't know what you want to call them, they're icy body comets bringing in clear, clean H2O at a rate of 20 to 40 tons each, and they're 25,000 each a day. That's amazing what we learned. And you know, I'm, I'm just fascinated by all this, and we're learning this together. So we know that Earth is growing also at the rate of a human fingernail rate of growth every, every year. The Earth is growing. The Earth is getting impounded by 
clean H2O and God knows what else these comets are bringing in, also the asteroids and comets are bringing in platinum. They know that the impact sites that have platinum are uh, asteroid impacts and uh, comet impacts. And our Earth is growing. And also uh, there are those who believe that we have a binary system coming in towards us every about 3,600 years or so. The ancients knew of this. The ancient priest of Egypt at the time of Solon, uh, the uh, Athenian lawmaker, told Solon that, you know, we've had many um, um, planetary systems coming at us and wreaking havoc, and in a couple of hours the Earth would flip poles, tremendous um, tidal waves and uh, uh, mountain upheavals and uh, tectonic slips and upheavals within just a few hours. And uh, this happens every so often. It has happened in the past every so often, and it will be happening in the future every so often. This is what the high priest of Egypt told Solon. And Solon told his uh, disciple, his pupil, Plato. And Plato left a written record of this as well. He claims, Plato also claims, that's how Atlantis was somehow submerged. And uh, recently the geologist said that Atlantis could be the old mountains of the uh, southern Mediterranean countries, like Portugal, Spain, the coast of France, Italy, Greece, and uh, Turkey, Asia Minor. And all these mountains are the uh, lost continent of Atlantis uh, sort of uh, cramped up and uh, pounded into these mountains of that area. Who knows? I mean, you know, because they found that, the, the, that these mountains are so old. Uh, this is amazing that they caught this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.